the Protectors of the Wood adventure series. Join our story of misfit teenagers as they struggle to save the world from climate change. Remember that everyone can make a difference and every action counts. And please subscribe to our YouTube channel, The Protectors of the Wood Adventure Series. Episode number 89, The Grown-Ups Always Ruin It. On a day I see coming, tell you where I'll be. tree then tell me there's a chance for us let me hear you say we can find a bridge to cross there must be a way as glenda abby lucy and tiny sat around the table in the churchyard cottage Abby knew that Glenda wanted to be left alone to finish her research paper for school. And Abby wondered how to create an activity for the children. But Lucy quickly solved that problem. We want to explore. Great idea. There are a lot of cool places out here to explore. If that's okay with Glenda, Tiny jumped in with her inner characters, Dawn the Good Fairy and Emily, her daughter. Dawn, let's Emily explore. Oh, it's fine with me, but I'm going to stay here and work. Make sure you come back well before dark. Of course. They quickly walked out into the late afternoon sun. Long shadows stretched across the churchyard and gave the scene a mysterious feeling with dark corners and shifting light. Okay, each one of us gets to be the leader. Who'd like to start? Me! 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 Whoever gets the lucky stone goes first. Abby spun around once taking a small stone from her pocket and transferring it to the other hand. Then she faced the children with both fists outstretched. Okay, which hand has the stone? This one. This one. Abby opened her left hand for Tiny, but it was empty. The right hand contained a round, somewhat flat, greenish-gray stone covered with thin, pale lines. The stone had a round hole in the middle, about the width of a pencil. Lucy goes first. The children carefully examined the stone. How do you know it's lucky? I don't really know, but it helps me to think and decide things when I rub it. I feel like it likes me and helps me. Don! has a lucky stone, too. How did you find it? It was on my path in the woods. I felt like it wanted me to find it. They were standing in front of the cottage. Lucy was looking this way and that. She began walking toward Bridge Avenue, glancing back over her shoulder to make sure Tiny and Abby were following. When they reached the front gate, they stood gazing out at the empty street. Abby recognized the tall, thin man staring back from one of the benches in front of the Middletown Standard office. His washed-out eyes met hers and gave her a creepy feeling, as if he were a spy from another planet in human disguise. He had been staring the same way when Abby looked out from Tuck's window. Lucy decided to turn right and walked between the wrought iron fence and a row of overgrown forsythia bushes, long since out of bloom. Abby and Tiny followed. Lucy turned right again and led them up the small path between the churchyard wall and the ancient apple trees. 
They passed the back of the cottage and finally hit the enormous privet hedge, enclosing leaves and broken branches at least six feet high. The privet hedge made a wall perhaps ten feet high. Lucy found an entrance into the privet fort, and they all sat in the middle of thousands and thousands of leaves gathered over decades. What a discovery! Nice going, Lucy. This is our privet fort. They walked back out onto the open grass. The sun was now low in the sky and shone in their eyes if they looked back toward Bridge Avenue. We don't have much time left. Let's give Tiny a chance as the leader. They all agreed. Don wants to go this way. Come follow me. It's all right, you see. There's nothing for you to fear. Come on over here. You can see me through your tears. I listen to you. I hear what you say. Go ahead and cry from your heart. I'll see you part with me. There's always a way. Piney stepped back into the privet fort. All the way up to the wall, where the leaves were within four feet of the top of the wall, Tiny found a slight opening between the hedge and the stone wall, and went right on through. Lucy and Abby ducked under the arching branches to follow close behind. Walking slowly and carefully, they passed the upended roots of a fallen tree, thickly overgrown with Virginia creeper and poison ivy. And then they reached raspberry and blackberry bushes with sharp thorns. At that point, they had to slide along the edge of the wall. Soon, they emerged onto a small open slope with delicate grass growing, a slope that descended gently to the back wall. An old wrought iron door led to the dirt road and the cornfield beyond. Abby was thinking. Ah, this is where I'm supposed to meet Phoebe tonight. Lucy and Tiny ran a few steps to the door and found it locked. Abby joined them. They looked through the ornamental iron bars at the world stretching on into the distance, and then they looked back at their small concealed space like a private room, all their own. Awesome job exploring, girls. Look at what you found. Their room was shaped like a right triangle, with the tall stone walls covering two sides, and the fallen tree and new growth covering the long third side. Abby was amazed that the gigantic old maple tree had never been removed. The result was a virtually impassable cocoon of vines, young maple trees, and thorn bushes. As the slope of the yard received less sun in the shadow of the wall, smaller plants and herbs grew until, in the corner by the door, only some thin grasses covered the ground. Other than the locked door to the outside world, only the narrow path from the privet fort provided an entrance to this hidden domain. A cardinal. See, the bright red bird. Oh, it's gone already. Listen, listen. It's an owl. Y yeah, you're right. Dawn says the owl is the boss. It's her place, but it's okay for us to be here. See, the wood, a chair, a table. Toward the far corner of their hidden room, there was a pile of branches and short sections of the fallen tree. Years ago, someone must have cut the fallen tree off the wall. 
Abby rolled three circular pieces back to the open space near the door to serve as seats and another larger piece to serve as a table. Then they sat down to consider their stunning success. We need to bring cups and cider. And chocolate! It's a secret place, like the cave house. Only better. It's only for us. Lucy looked at the others to emphasize her words. Can we tell Glenda? Only Glenda. I have a few friends who help me. They know how to keep secrets. Phoebe is one of them. How did you know? Chester said that Abby and Phoebe did it. Don said that Phoebe's okay. That's all right then. But Lucy turned to Abby and laid down the law. You and your friends have to promise not to let them ruin it. What do you mean? Who's going to ruin it? You know, they always ruin it. The grown-ups don't like these places. They never let them be. You've got to promise. Phew. That's a tall order. I'm supposed to be the gardener here. They're going to want me to clean up this place. See? See? They never understand. Never. You can't say anything to them. What good are you and your friends? I thought you were on our side. Dawn says she wants you to promise. Where is Emily going to play? That's what Dawn wants to know. Someday, Dawn's coming to Middletown. And Emily is going to play here. Oh my, this is all more serious than I thought. Water from her eyes ran onto her cheeks as she shook her head. I'm going to have to dig my heels in and fight. I wonder what Reverend Tuck will think if I tell him we can't touch this. Well, maybe you can touch it, but you can't ruin it. Okay. Hopefully we can manage that. I promise to do my best. And my friends will promise too. I know they will. We already promised to protect the forest. That's what Chester said. How do you know everything? My grandpa and Chester always tell me everything I want to know. But I need you and Tiny to understand. I'm not the king of the world. I don't have power over everything. But I promise to do my best. My absolute best. Come follow me. It's alright, you see. There's nothing for you to fear. Come on over here You can see me through your tears I'll listen to you I hear what you say Go ahead and cry from your heart I'll see you part with me there's always a way I'll see you wherever you are You can't be too near or too far Any place you may happen to be I can shine for you to me and you'll surely see how life begins all around see what you found just 
walk through the door And my world is always some more The best is in store The real story goes on and on Thanks for listening to the Protectors of the Wood Adventure Series. Find all our projects on protectorsofthewood.com and support us on Patreon at Protectors of the Wood. And to all the eco-warriors out there, remember that everyone can make a difference and every action counts.